my presentation, I really try to set out a story of why it's important to pay attention to cognition and multiple sclerosis, identifying uh, there, that there is a subset of individuals that really have more of a cognitive or cerebral predominant MS, and that those individuals uh, who lack physical disability um, and present only with this or predominantly with this cognitive phenotype may be becoming more common as our medications overall improve. And I link this also to the phenotype in children who often have very low physical disability with an EDSS score, for example, you know, one or 0.5, but many have impairment in their academic achievement and function um, or in standardized neuropsychological testing. So um, the other feature that I think is interesting is if you look at um, individuals who are diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in, in a few years after high school, for example, you can see even pre-morbidly or, or pre-diagnosis um, that there are academic achievement and academic performance suffers. So showing that there is some cognitive prodrome even before an individual is diagnosed. And I think that we can do a lot for our patients by recognizing and, and assessing for cognitive dysfunction even early in the disease course. Uh, later in the disease course, you encounter this interesting confluence of cognitive dysfunction from MS and potentially the cognitive impairment that can occur with aging um, or dementias as they become emergent in the aging population. So that's another area um, that I think will become interesting and important as our population ages better with MS overall. Uh, in addition, in our um, population, we have looked at um, the cognitive um, function of individuals by neuropsych measures, such as the simple digit modalities test, and evaluated in a cohort that we follow uh, relationships between SDMT performance um, and T2 lesion volume on MRI, and shown a strong relationship actually between um, performance and impairment and the SDMT in individuals with low physical disability and regional T2 lesion volume. So we showed that the strongest relationship was actually in left temporal T2 lesion volume and its correlation with impairment on the SDMT. So just showing that there is a regional predominance there, I think it's interesting, uh, intriguing. We'd like to replicate this in a larger group. We didn't find that to be the case in another cohort uh, that is an older cohort with more physical disability. Um, that, that relationship didn't hold up. So this may be something that's um, more important in people closer to diagnosis.